The National Weather Service. Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. And good evening, everyone. Happy Wednesday to you. I'm meteorologist Mike Ottenweller with the National Weather Service. Tonight is June 24th, and I'll be taking you through the forecast this evening. As always, you can follow us online at arh.noaa.gov, and that'll take you to all of Alaska weather. You can also keep up with us on weather.gov forward slash Alaska. Again, all of Alaska weather there. NWS Alaska on Facebook. That'll feature the Juneau, Fairbanks, and Anchorage office. And then find us on Twitter using the hashtag AKWX, and you can uh, tag us at NWS Alaska. And then finally, this show and a few other segments are available on YouTube after the show. So as, uh, as you probably can guess from just looking outside, especially if you live north of the Alaska Range, uh, it is quite smoky and uh, fire danger remains extreme through much of the area north of the Alaska Range and even some pockets of the Copper River Basin. Not much change at all to this map from yesterday. Uh, conditions have remained very, very dry, even though we've seen some wet thunderstorms, very, very dry conditions, and that stretches all the way down here to the eastern side of the Cook Inlet along the Kenai Peninsula, where we have the uh, Card Street and the Stetson fire burning, and then down to southwest Alaska through Bethel. Again, thunderstorms uh, throughout this area and extreme high fire danger, keeping, uh, keeping conditions very volatile for fire starts. And again, uh, looking at our warning map, we see the same story here with some red flag warnings issued. These are mainly for strong winds north of the Alaska Range. And uh, take a look at your website or your local forecast to see exactly when each of these is in effect until. Uh, but for the most part, they continue on into uh, tomorrow night at about 10 p.m., Thursday night at 10 p.m. We do also have a few uh, late edition dense smoke advisories for areas just on the uh, north side of the Alaska Range in the Tanana Valley. And that is from the Fairbanks office, dense smoke down to about a mile visibility and uh, expecting those conditions to persist until about 2 o'clock on Thursday afternoon. So be aware if you're, uh, if you're traveling or if you're heading out, dense smoke in the area, and uh, that should uh, continue to, to plague the air quality for uh, the days ahead, at least until we see our patterns start to slowly change. And with that, we'll start looking at our satellite loop, and we'll talk about that pattern change. You won't see much sign of it out here over the western bearing. As you can see, high pressure remains large and in charge out over Shimia, keeping this area, for the most part, sky uh, clear from this angle. However, there is a layer of marine stratus shoved all the way down at the surface out there. And so in a three-dimensional view, you would see that marine stratus lingering out through that area. The feature that I want to drag your attention to is up here, this cold front is going to start sliding towards the coast and provide us with our pattern change that we do expect over the next several days. And that again is sweeping through the Bering Strait right now. Not a lot of energy uh, in it, but it does have some light rain that is starting to hit the Seward Peninsula just as of this afternoon. And that will continue to make its way towards the west coast of Alaska. And so we'll uh, take a look now at the mainland and see how exactly that feature is starting to approach. Here is all of our smoke. It's easier to see in the early morning hours on the visible satellite because it's trapped under the inversion and makes a little bit more of a presence known on the satellite. However, uh, our thunderstorms have fired once again all the way along this thermal trough here from the Alaska Range and starting to st stretch down into the uh, Kosokwim Mountains and even towards the Kilbuck Mountains. And one more time for this loop. Also notice down here in the L Gulf of Alaska, a couple areas of low pressure uh, sliding up northward in the state towards the state. And with that, we do see some light rain starting near Haida Gwaii and the Dixon entrance. And uh, that rain will continue to make its way ever so slowly towards South Central. It's going to work in tandem with this trough. And uh, we'll see exactly what that brings us in the forecast here as we go through the next, uh, the next few minutes. So again, high pressure and control out over the western bearing. Uh, high at 1026 millibars, and that is keeping areas of fog. Some of that fog is dense at times. Western Aleutians reported one quarter of a mile visibility. So be aware if you're planning on flying in those areas that there is some dense fog. Most of this is very low to the surface, again, only about 500 feet thick off of the water. But uh, dense fog and low stratus continues to be trapped underneath that ridge. Here's our cold front up here, and that is starting to just hit the northwest portion of the state and bringing some light rain showers. 
And then as we look towards the Gulf of Alaska, here are a few weak areas of low pressure, 996, 997. And basically, this is what this pattern is going to look like for the next several days. A few areas of low pressure spinning down here in the Gulf and starting to bring some light rain into southeast Alaska. Out over on the mainland, we do see some showers just starting to fire here near uh, Bethel and stretching down towards King Salmon. And then the more active showers, once again, and thunderstorms will be up here through the Tanana Valley and stretching back towards the Alcan border. Do have areas of smoke again with those dense smoke advisories and don't expect that to be going anywhere anytime soon with very uh, slow pattern change for the eastern portion of the interior. As we look into tonight's forecast, those showers and thunderstorms should start to diminish over the interior as they have the last couple nights, probably with these long days continuing on into the, uh, into the evening and overnight hours just after midnight, and they should be uh, just about done after that. Some showers lingering along the mountains, hopefully providing some rain for the fires, but uh, nothing of a whole lot of consequence. As we look towards the Gulf of Alaska, we do see those areas of low pressure starting to creep northwards and spreading light rain into the southeastern portion of the state and then up over the northwest portion of the state. That is where we have our cold front, and that is working ever so slowly to help change our pattern as we go into the end of the week. And again, for Thursday now, we're looking for very similar conditions. Uh, low pressure, a couple areas of low pressure spinning in the Gulf of Alaska. And with that, we, uh, we see the light rain continuing to spread into southeast Alaska. Um, none of it's going to be terribly heavy, just mainly light rain with some low clouds mixing in here, affecting the passes on the northern portion of, uh, of southeast Alaska. And some of that will start to move its way into Kodiak in eastern Kenai Peninsula. Uh, thunderstorms once again over the interior, and there's our cold front starting to work its way slightly closer to the state, leaving this area kind of vulnerable for one more day of convection and thunderstorms, but we should see those dissipate as we go into, uh, into the weekend time frame, Friday into Saturday. And then on into Friday now, let's take a look and see uh, how our surface map is setting up for that. 1027 millibar high still located out over the western Aleutians. And with that, we do expect some more fog and that marine stratus to continue to be uh, a factor out there. As we look towards the Gulf of Alaska, just a few weak areas of lower pressure spinning again northwards towards uh, the south central areas and towards the Copper River Basin. Expect most of this to be confined to the Gulf locations, the rain that is. We will see clouds spill over the Chugach and Kenai Mountains, but we don't expect a whole lot of rain due to this orientation of the flow is coming more from a southeast to northwest direction, and that should keep most of the inland areas, especially in the Cook Inlet, dry. Thunderstorms as this trough, this is the remnants of that cold front now coming down through southwest. This will bring a chance for that smoke to clear over southwest Alaska. However, not looking for a big pattern change with thunderstorms once again Friday afternoon over eastern interior Alaska. Taking a look at temperatures now, you can see uh, we mainly had another mild day across the state with plenty of sunshine. Uh, upper 50s for the marine areas that were influenced by that colder air. And then we did see uh, low to upper 60s for much of southeast Alaska with 67 degrees there at Yakutat. We got into 68 degrees near Cordova, 61 at Middleton Island, 72 here in south central and Cook Inlet area at Anchorage. And then uh, mainly low 70s as you got up into the Susitna Valley, uh, high 70s over towards the Copper River Basin. Looking to the north now, we saw much of interior stay a little bit cooler than they have the last couple days. The smoke is probably helping to keep temperatures down just a little bit and uh, some, some cloud cover from those thunderstorms is lingering in the morning hours, keeping the sunshine suppressed just a little bit. So temperature is mid to upper 70s for the most part until you get up north of the Brooks Range, and that's where we see things quite a bit cooler, mid 50s all the way down to 38 degrees here on the north slope. And then over the western portion of the state, we do have anywhere from mid 50s to low 60s, all the way down to 39 degrees there on the Seward Peninsula, 48 degrees at Nome. And as we look towards southwest Alaska, we can see here 78 degrees at Bethel, another warm day there, with 72 reported at Dillingham. Stretching out over the Aleutian chain now, we see uh, anywhere from the low 60s becoming low 50s by the time you get towards uh, Dutch Harbor and the Pribilof Islands in the upper 40s. Taking a look at tonight's low temperatures, we have mainly low 50s to mid 50s and even some upper 40s for southeast Alaska. As we look towards South Central, we have anywhere from the upper 40s to low 50s. Again, a pretty mild night out there with a very short amount of actual darkness. Uh, over the interior portion of the state, temperatures will remain quite warm up there into the low 60s and upper 50s. Towards the northern portion of the state, anywhere from the upper 30s to low 40s. And for Southwest Alaska, expect your lows tonight in the 40s. For the Aleutian chain, we'll see anywhere from 50s near the water. And then as we get a little bit farther towards uh, the western Aleutians, expect low 40s. 
for tomorrow's high temperatures, a very similar day to today. The biggest change will be up here along the northwest coast where we start to see some colder temperatures moving in. Low 40s for all areas up there with low 50s starting to creep in a little bit closer towards the Brooks Range. Alaska range will still be mainly in the upper 70s and to the low 80s. And then for the Copper River Basin, expect about 73 degrees. For southeast Alaska, we're looking for temperatures in the low 60s for the most part. On into flying weather now, taking a look at our MVFR, IFR conditions. We do have a few areas of uh, IFR expected in the Gulf of Alaska here with those areas of low, low pressure. We do see that rain moving up and starting to create some lower conditions as it is kind of a stagnant pattern. That cloud deck will continue to lower and lower and um, we expect some MVFR mixed with IFR conditions there. Out over the western portion of the Barren, we do have that marine stratus keeping things under IFR conditions out there. Thunderstorms and smoke will continue to be a factor for aviation from much of the Alaska range down to the Kusukwim, Kusukwim uh, Mountains for tomorrow, for Thursday. And then uh, with that cold front, we do see a stretch of MVFR and becoming IFR as you get towards the northwest portion of the state there on Thursday. Now looking at the pass map, you can see for tomorrow here we have Anatovic Pass. We expect VFR conditions there. For Adigan, also VFR. The trend will be VFR, however, we do have thunderstorms for much of the locations around South Central and towards the interior portion of the state with Lake Clark and Merrill VFR, but thunderstorms there. Rainy, similar conditions, thunderstorms in the afternoon. Windy also will be VFR with thunderstorms developing. Isabel will be VFR with thunderstorms in the afternoon. Mantassa visual flight rules, thunderstorms for them as well. Tanita will be VFR and thunderstorms for them in the afternoon. Portage will be VFR becoming MVFR as that area of low pressure works its way towards Prince William Sound. Don't expect any thunderstorms this far south close to the Gulf. And Chilkoot and White also, same reasons as Portage, will see lower clouds move in MVFR, or excuse me, VFR to MVFR through the day. No thunderstorms in those areas. Now as we look at our freezing levels, we do see Probably the most significant aspect of this map being that the surface line and the 2,000 foot line are starting to creep down a little bit closer towards the northwest portion of the state and that is with that colder air. Don't expect a monster surge of cold air across western Alaska with this cold front, but we do expect it to help to work and make a pattern change throughout much of the state setting up instead of this ridge of high pressure that we've had for the past several days, we'll have a trough drop in and create an area of low pressure down south of Bristol Bay and that will make for uh, cooler and cloudier conditions which should be good news for the fires. Looking at tomorrow's icing, we do have an area of icing associated with that cold front, just light, isolated, moderate, above 4,000 feet. A small area here south of the Alaska Peninsula, above 8,000 feet. And then for southeast Alaska, a small area associated with that area of low pressure and above 10,000 feet. Looking at our jet stream now, we can see it fairly active to our south at 110 knots, western Aleutians diving down in support of this area of low pressure at about 110 knots and then moving off at about 90 knots, becoming 70 knots as it climbs this area of high pressure. This is a very strong area of high pressure and will be here for several days to come. Another weak area, excuse me, another weak area of the jet stream moving over the northern portion of the state and that is supporting that cold front at about 105 knots. So as we look at tomorrow's 9,000 foot winds, we can see mainly light winds around this area of high pressure at about 15 to 20 knots as you get into the, uh, into the Aleutian Islands there. Around this area of low pressure, we see about 25 to 30 knots wrapping in from the counterclockwise direction. Over the state, mainly southwesterly flow at 9,000 feet, 10 to 25 knots. And then as we look towards the panhandle, we do see southeasterly becoming, excuse me, southwesterly becoming southeasterly flow at about 30 knots down to 15 knots. And for 3,000 foot winds, we see uh, mainly light winds again out over this area of high pressure, 15 to 25 knots. A little bit gustier through the passes there of the Aleutian chain, about 25 knots. And then we see again southwesterly flow, 10 to 15 knots for much of the state with counterclockwise flow in the Gulf around these two areas of low pressure at about 15 to 25 knots. Taking a look at turbulence now, we have an area below 4,000 feet, light, isolated, moderate off of the Seward Peninsula. A few areas as those winds blow through the gaps below 2,000 feet uh, along the Aleutian chain. And then isolated, moderate below 2,000 as you see a little bit of a barrier jet start to develop here along the coastal areas. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with your marine forecast.
Alaska needs to, to wake up. They really need to wake up. Uh, population is uh, increasing in the state of Alaska. The uh, mindset of Alaskans has to change, that they are in a dangerous area. The majority of our fires here and probably in the lower portion of the south central portion of Alaska are human-caused fires. Our problem with children in fire escalates in the spring, summer, and fall. All the aerial bombers, all of the helicopters, all the firefighters that there are that we have in the United States and the world cannot get in front of something like that because it's generating too much power. In this part of the state right now in south central Alaska, we've got uh, lots of standing dead spruce trees from the spruce beetle. Black spruce are a very flammable type of tree even when fully green. Our weather's really changed. We have an earlier fire season now. The Arctic uh, starts uh, spring eight days earlier now than it did a decade ago. That's significant. You know, last, last several winters over the Kenai Peninsula, particularly, the snowpack has been lower than people who have been living there for 30 years ever remember. They build their houses right in among the trees because of the beauty, the remoteness, and all of those nice Alaskan things we like to think about. Yet, when they have a fire, then that is the exact recipe for having a catastrophic fire. So, as Alaskans are very familiar with fire, um, we heat our homes with it, we, uh, we camp out, we, uh, we go fishing, we, do, we use fire all the time, so we have to be fire safe, you have to be fire smart. This is a major issue that we all have to deal with. And you'll notice that many, many agencies are involved here today. And I think that we really have to look at that here in Alaska. What are the things that we can do prior to the resources that we can put toward them up front are far, far, far cheaper than it is to have it happen after the fact. I mean, it's not a short-term solution that if you're looking for, you're looking for a long-term solution because you have a long-term problem. Being the lone ranger out there isn't going to isn't going to work anymore. It's just going to make everything harder. Somebody next door to you, or, or real close by, that that doesn't, and it wipes you out. It's got to be that involvement with uh, the community. And that kind of planning works not just for fires, but any kind of disaster. Because we could have a major earthquake, roads could get cut off, uh, structures could collapse. You might be counting on transportation, but if your garage collapses around your transportation, you might have to rely on your neighborhood. They may not like their neighbors, they may not like their local government, but they have to interact um, so they can save both their lives and their property. Fire prevention really is something that everybody needs to, to share in. We don't sell fireworks in this area. They used to sell them right outside this door, across the street. Um, but that stopped about uh, five or six years ago. And um, so, so fireworks and also the community here is really tight, and they pull together um, as far as fire prevention. We are a highly trained group of individuals. We're very tight within the community. We're there to back each other up continually get together as a subdivision, a little mini community, talk to the local planning commission, um, get that secondary access put in. Panic people trying to rush down roads that are heavily socked in with smoke, and visibility is down to 100 feet or less. Those are the guys who are going to have to drive that truck down that one-way road. Those are the people that know their communities. So you need to get involved with your local fire department. Uh, volunteer or otherwise. Whether it be involved in fire prevention programs, community education, helping at the station. Our equipment up to status, that we keep our training up to status, it's very important. And they really have one interest in mind, and that is to help you help yourself. They can also participate in community uh, land use practices, 
in developing those practices and making them unique to their own community. Your community council meetings bring this up as an agenda item and do a little bit of pre-planning and a little bit of pre-thinking about these. Local uh, government agencies and especially their uh, legislators. We hope that our community and our local governments and state governments recognize that fact. Resources are very limited. Um, it's really tough in some situations to make things come together. But it still comes back to that community making a decision. Is this what's acceptable to us? And when it's not, then that community is the one that needs to work to change in that. And welcome back to the show. Hope you enjoyed that fire weather segment. Couldn't be uh, more important than right now with all the fires burning across the state. So that'll lead us into our segue to sea ice, of course. As you can see, uh, the edge is well north of the Bering Strait, stretches down to the northern portion of Russia. As we see that cold front push through, we will see some pieces break off from the northwest, moving towards the southeast. And with that, we do expect them to break off and move southeast, but they should be melting as they do so, as the waters warm pretty quickly to the south of the ice edge. On into our marine forecast now for southeast Alaska, up towards Lynn Canal, we see south winds 20 knots for Thursday and seas 2 becoming 4 feet. Out towards Petersburg, east winds two, 10 knots and seas about 2 feet and southeast 30 knots down towards Ketchikan, 6 foot seas. Out over the open waters, east to southeast winds 20 to 15 knots and seas generally between 6 and 7 feet. For Friday, expect mainly a southeast to southerly flow. Expecting gale force winds now for Lynn Canal on Friday and seas coming all the way up to 7 feet. 5 to 4 foot seas for the southern portions of the inner passageways. And then 20 to 25 knots and seas about 6 to 8 feet for the outer waters. Towards south central now, we expect a little bit of variable conditions towards Prince William Sound under the high pressure that remains over south central. Expect northeast flow through uh, Cook Inlet region at about 10 knots. And then Prince William Sound, expect westerly winds at 15 knots, seas about 2 to 3 feet for those areas. As we get towards the Gulf, expect east becoming northeasterly flow around that area of low pressure, 25 to 30 knots, and seas generally between 9 and 10 feet. And towards the western Barren Islands, expect southeast winds 20 knots, seas 4 feet. And for Shelikov Strait, northeast winds their favored direction at 30 knots, seas 10 feet. For Friday, expect southwest winds over Cook Inlet at about 10 knots and seas 3 feet. Similar story for Prince William Sound, just a little bit higher winds at 15 knots. Over the Gulf, expect east to southeast and then becoming northeast winds east of Kodiak Island, anywhere between 10 and 20 knots, and seas will be between, uh, will be about 5 feet. And then out over the Cook Inlet region, we expect south winds becoming east by the Barren Islands and east in Shelikov at about 15 knots, and seas will be fairly low on the order of about 3 to 4 feet. As we get towards the Alaska Peninsula, variable winds north of the chain becoming northwesterly at 25 knots, north to northwest south of the chain at 20 to 25 knots, Seas between 6 and 8 feet. And for Friday, expect northwest to southwest winds, 15 knots, seas 4 to 5 feet, and then 10 to 20 knots, uh, 10 to 20 knots out of the northwest for the most part, and seas 5 to 6 feet. On Thursday, for the Aleutian Islands, we expect mainly north to northwest winds. Strongest winds will be towards the eastern Aleutians at 25 to 30 knots, and seas generally on the order of 7, 7 feet for those areas. 
a little bit lower winds and calmer seas as we get towards that area of high pressure, 10 to 15 knots out of the north and east. And as we look into Friday now, we see most of the flow again northwesterly now. This is where we have the favored gusty winds out of the bays and passes, 20 knots and seas about 6 to 7 feet. And again, lower winds and seas as we get towards the western Aleutians. For western west coast of Alaska, expect 20 to 25 knots out of the west northwest and seas between 5 and 8 feet. And then on Friday, expect again similar conditions, westerly winds, a little bit lower now, 15 to 20 knots and seas between 5 and 7 feet. For the Arctic coast, expect west northwest winds for the western portion of the coast becoming southwest west and northerly winds over by Kaktovik, anywhere between 10 and 20 knots and seas generally light off of the, off of the sewer peninsula at about 3 feet. And on into Friday now, expect northwest flow at about 15 knots. Seas anywhere between uh, just about three feet for the northwestern portion and still ice locked up north of the Arctic coast. So recapping tonight's weather, very smoky conditions expected across the central interior. We do have those red flags for strong winds. Those are in effect until midnight Thursday night. And we do have dense fog, excuse me, dense smoke advisories with visibilities as low as one mile expected for portions of the central interior. A few areas of low pressure will bring light rain first to southeast Alaska and then as we get into Thursday's forecast we expect it to make its way towards south central Alaska. Do expect another round of thunderstorms and lightning through much of the central portion of the state as we get into tomorrow afternoon. And then on Friday we finally see our cold front starting to sweep through in the form of a weak trough. One more round of convection. It should not be as widespread for the thunderstorms on Friday but we do expect more thunderstorms towards the Alaskan border. Alaskan Canadian border and then over the Gulf of Alaska those troughs will continue to move up bringing light rain and we'll start to see our pattern shift to cooler and wetter as we go towards the weekend. Thanks for watching the show this evening. Have a great These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.